When people talk about ways to reduce carbon emissions, there's one thing that you probably hear a lot. Electric cars. There'll be a day in America where most cars are electric. President Biden has made investing in electric vehicles a major focus. We're looking at what could be a game changer. Electric vehicles, a whole new era of driving. But when it comes to the environment, there's something that might surprise you. Electric cars are not really all they're cracked up to be. I think that electrification is a really important piece of reducing the total emissions of the transportation system. But our focus right now is almost exclusively on electric vehicles, and I think that's a problem. You know, when we think about electric vehicles, we think about tailpipe emissions, right? So the vehicle itself is not burning fossil fuels. There's not a big gas tank attached to it. So there's nothing coming out of, you know, the tailpipe to then go up into the atmosphere, right? But that's not actually a full picture of the life cycle emissions of an automobile or of an electric vehicle, you know, in particular. This is Paris Marx. He's a writer and the author of this book, which is about competing visions for the future of transportation. Marx is saying that cars have two types of emissions. Tailpipe, the stuff that comes from driving the car around, and lifetime, the stuff that comes from manufacturing the car. So electric cars have relatively low tailpipe emissions. Nothing comes out when you're driving around. But you do need to recharge the car, so pollution from power plants supplying that energy is increased. The hope, however, is that as the energy mix gets cleaner over time, those emissions will diminish. But that is not the only environmental complication. A much bigger one, in fact, has to do with how electric vehicles are manufactured. When we think about a fossil fuel vehicle and what goes into the conventional vehicles that, that we use, we recognize that there's this big oil industry that is extracting um, you know, all these bar barrels of oil from around the world that's causing human uh, consequences, that's having environmental consequences. But often when we think of the electric vehicle, we don't think of that supply chain. We don't think about what actually goes into it because again, we don't you know, pump gas into the tank in the way that we do with um, conventional vehicles that most people use right now. Just look at two of the most important minerals for electric car batteries, lithium and cobalt. The extraction process for these materials has serious consequences in the places that they're mined like water pollution, air pollution, habitat destruction, and ground destabilization. We've already been warned about the spiraling environmental cost of lithium mining in places like Bolivia or Australia or Tibet. And that's before we get to the social consequences. The world's biggest tech companies are being sued over child mining debts in the Democratic Republic of Congo. They accuse companies like Apple, Google, Dell, Microsoft, and Tesla from benefiting from child labor to mine cobalt. You know, a lot of countries want to almost completely replace their fleets of vehicles. So it's not just continuing to operate these mines that already exist, it's opening new mines in new places, creating more extraction, and then having more environmental and human consequences that come of that. And so that's a serious problem that, you know, doesn't get that considered as much when we just talk about zero emission vehicles and how great these are for the environment. So because of the extraction process for those minerals, in terms of lifetime emissions, the situation is actually really bad. Before hitting the road, a Tesla Model 3 had 65% more emissions than a Toyota RAV4. That's why an electric car needs to be driven a lot in order to make environmental sense. Because its tailpipe emissions are 34% lower than the RAV4, eventually it will break even and have better emissions in the gas-powered car if driven enough. About 20,600 miles. So these two problems, electric recharging and mineral extraction, are two big reasons why even system-wide adoption of electric cars doesn't really have a big impact on emissions models. Like, I'm not saying that an electric vehicle is worse than a fossil fuel vehicle. It's often the case that the electric vehicle will still be cleaner when you look at the life cycle emissions. But the key thing is that often it's not as much of a reduction as we think it is. In 2014, a study was published in the journal Environmental Science and Technology, 
The study found that even in the very optimistic scenario that 42% of all cars on the road are electric or hybrid by 2050, compared to about 1% in 2020, there likely would not be a major decrease in emissions. So if electric cars are not all they're cracked up to be environmentally, why are they so famous? There's a lot of extraction that goes into uh, creating electric vehicles because you need all the minerals for all the batteries for all those individual vehicles, and even more if we're talking about SUVs and trucks. Um, And so, you know, that creates jobs, that creates value um, for companies, that fuels the economy. um, And then when it comes to actually creating all of those vehicles, that creates manufacturing jobs, which are particularly valued in our society you know, also looks good when you're talking about an electorate to to show the kind of jobs that you're creating and looks good when you think about economic growth figures, GDP, things like that. You're going to be transitioned to clean electric vehicles and hydrogen vehicles right here in the United States of America by American workers with American products. And, you know, that goes back to the very early days of promoting automobility itself and why there were so many interests that were backing, you know, pushing cities and and governments to embrace the automobile over other forms of transportation. So the problem is not the type of car. The problem is the car itself and the entire infrastructure, the highways and freeways, the suburbs, the spread out shopping centers that are built around the personal vehicle. The problem is car dependency. If you need to drive everywhere you need to go, then obviously that requires a lot more energy than if you were just able to walk or bike or something like that, because where the place that you're looking to go is so much closer than what it would be in a uh, in a suburban kind of environment. A significant increase in people taking the bus or the subway or the train would do much more to reduce emissions than replacing every gas car with an electric one. More public transit requires real investment, but it's not impossible. The total emissions that are produced by that are so much lower than um, if everyone is driving their own vehicle or even their own electric vehicle, um, because you know the battery uh, minerals required are so much less, the production um, is so much less. And that does require rethinking the way that we construct communities. We need to redesign the places where people live and work to make commutes shorter, to encourage much more walking, and to massively expand the least carbon intensive option around, which is public transportation. 30 people on a bus or a subway or a train is a lot more efficient than 30 people driving their own cars, whether they're electric or not. 